Okay, this is uh, Cameron for Tweaktown. Uh, today is Friday, uh, May the 31st, and we're here at the Gigabyte headquarters. What you can see here is a, a whole range of Gigabyte's uh, new Intel Haswell Z87 motherboards. These will what are going to be showed at Computex. So what we're going to do now is run over each of them just quickly and give you an overview of some of the main and cool new features on, on the boards. Okay, Stu, thanks for having us here. You're welcome. Uh, maybe can we start with the G1 uh, Sniper 5 motherboard? That'll be this guy right here. Okay. So, as you can see, we've got uh, a lot of different colors going on here. These guys are green, so G1 Killer Series gaming motherboards. So this is uh, pretty much our high-end board for the, for the, uh, the 8 Series. And as you can see, we've got a special area here for audio. As you'd expect, we've got a discrete audio solution um, as, we, as we've used before in our G1 Killer Series. This time we're using the Creative Sound Core 3D, which is under this, this uh, gold shield here, which uh, helps to protect from electrostatic interference. Mm -hmm. And we've got also a headphone amplifier here, which is 600 ohm. We've got the Nichicon Japanese capacitors, which are perfect for audio. We've got a trace path going around here, which separates the audio from the, from the rest of the motherboard. Mm -hmm. This lights up. We've got LEDs on the back, so when it's running your system, it'll light up. You'll see this this trace path light. All right. But most importantly, we've got this little op amp here, which I think you've covered earlier on Tweak Town. We did do an article about this. Can yeah. you just tell us maybe briefly? I understand we you can well, change this chip for well, different... That's, that's um, the idea. We, we give you a special extractor so that you can pull this out. It's the first time that an operational amplifier has been used on any kind of mainstream DIY PC motherboard. Now, the operational amplifier, I'll, I can possibly show you a, a short demo, perhaps. but. Um, Without the operation amplifier, you're going to notice a big difference in sound volume and also quality. It gets got a lot more punch, a lot more clarity. You can hear the separation of the instruments a lot more. It's basically it's a high-end hi-fi part that you'd normally find on uh, maybe a high-end amplifier or or more expensive equipment. So basically, you're usually using a you computer. guys are going all out with the yeah. 8 series when it comes to audio. Absolutely, trying and to trying to produce one of the best onboard audio solutions on the market. Well, it's. It, if you, even if you're using kind of mainstream or even cheaper speakers, you'll still notice a difference in sound. But with a high-end system, if you're using really a good quality amplifier and speakers, this is going to give you a great audio source. Okay, and then should we move along? What's, which, which well, here we have the, the, the smaller version, the micro ATX version of the Sniper 5. So you've got uh, a very similar kind of audio array in the corner here, again with the op the Nichicon capacitors, the trace path lighting, and the sound core 3D. Okay. Um, I might also add that the Cyber 5 uses a PLX so that it supports full four way SLI. Well, that's really yeah. good. Well, it's a gaming board, so we. So you've gone all out, yeah. Yeah, if you want to go all out in terms of your VGA cards, you absolutely can. And both the, the Sniper 5 and the M5 use uh, gold fittings on the back here. So you've got HDMI, display port, and the audio is all in gold this time. Well, and actually, on most of all, all, this, all of the mainstream segment, we, we're also using the gold. Uh, CPU sockets. So these are 15, 15 micron CPU sockets. Very good. Now, so these were the gaming boards. They're the right? gaming boards, and they're in green. But as you know, our signature overclocking boards are all orange. So here these, we have. These are the ones that High Cookie work on, right? Well, yeah. I mean, and this this one here, the the OC board. This is Cookie's baby, I guess. We've we've tried to design a board which. Suits overclockers in, in every aspect. So I mean, if I could just show you kind of one uh, kind of fun thing here, I, cook, I mean, Cookie has actually placed two USB two ports here on on this position simply because as an overclocker, you're going to be sitting here most of the time. You're going to be playing with these buttons. You're not going to be around this side. So it just makes sense from the perspective of an overclocker to have access to USB ports here. But there are a bunch of features. You can see we've got. Features so you can control the actual frequency of the CPU. You've got a turbo button, a tag button, and various switches, including a. What, does the, what does the tag button do? It allows you to remember your settings so wow. that you can create a profile instantly. This is an LED debug, uh, as you would expect to find on an OC board. Okay. We're also using black capacitors on all of the. 8 series boards. So it matches, are, matches the theme. It doesn't just... Doesn't well, just you don't have also, some other color like green, it doesn't just... They're also rated to to perform for like 10,000 hours at very, very high temperatures, so the Good for overclockers. <laughs> good for overclockers and they're more expensive, but that's across the board on all of our 8 series boards. Okay. Um, this is the OC Force, which if you like is a more... F uh, I guess a 
a full featured version of an OC port. So you've got the third party SATA, you've got more, more USB. I mean, this is very much a, has everything kind of board. <coughs> You'll notice one difference that the OC Force has a PLX chip to do four way SLI, but a different configuration here in the OC because we're taking, we're actually taking uh, some PCI lanes from the PCH here. So this would be, I guess, optimized for four way AMD Crossfire without the potential uh, interference on the PLX chip. In there. Okay, so, well, that's good, right? And ah. then, um, what? <coughs> over, on, over here we have the UD5. Right. UD5 has dual LAN. They're both uh, Intel NICs. Also has 1394. And again, you've got lots of third party SATA. This is gold. This is the UD4. Okay, so, yeah, now you, so now it's going to be easy to distinguish exactly. We're, the difference between these boards. So UD5 is gold, UD4 is red, and UD3 is perhaps a more gigabyte looking blue. Yes. These two, he, two guys here are Mini ITX. This is a uh, new Haswell board, so it's the Z87M Wi Fi. Has a Intel compatible, Y DAI compatible Wi Fi chip. Over here, we have a AMD uh, socket FM2, so this supports New Richland. APUs as well as Trinity, and again we've included a chip here. This one's compatible with AWD, which is AMD's wireless display technology. And both of these boards, you've got the antennas on the side panel. All right, so um, thank you, Stu, for uh, letting us in to Pleasure. your headquarters here in Taipei before cool. Computex. I uh, promise we'll uh, we'll stick to the NDA. Good man. Just as best <laughs> as we can, and. Um, yeah, I, we, we may be back at Gigabyte at Computex itself, um, but if not, here's a look at Gigabyte's new motherboards for the 8 series Intel Haswell processors, and of course the Z87 chipset. Thanks for watching, come back again soon for more videos from Tweaktown.